You wouldn't want your newly planted trees to look like this, this, or maybe this. It's completely dead. So let's dig into what will turn your first or next reforestation project into a big win. Planting trees might not be rocket science, but it's certainly not without its frustrations. Shockingly, nearly 80% of all planted seeds fail to grow. Even if you're an experienced reforester, there's a chance that you'll discover valuable nuggets of wisdom in this video that could enhance your efforts. But what challenges does a tree planter encounter and how does one overcome them? What do you need to consider to avoid spreading invasive arts and destroying the ecosystem that you intend to help? Let's get one step closer to reforestation by unveiling the five core pillars of tree planting. And hold tight until the end. We've got a special gift waiting for you that will show you how to seamlessly connect these pillars for maximum impact. Number one, select the right area. It's all about location, location, location. Imagine you're scouting the perfect spot for your reforestation project. You could look for land that's already inhabited by wild forest, or why not land that humans earlier were using but has now been depleted of nutrients. Note of caution here, try to stick close to a nearby forest to increase your chances of success. Talk and collaborate with local farmers and municipalities to get their support, know-how, and also their permissions. After picking an area, investigate further. You should now become a botanical detective, noting down the species in the area and gathering seeds like precious clues. But it doesn't stop there. You need to decode the sunlight patterns, analyse soil quality, and even size up the competition, the neighbouring vegetation. Plant the wrong trees in the wrong place, and you might end up doing more harm than good. And here's a pro tip. Local collaboration is your secret source. Working hand in hand with the local community ensures your project will thrive. After all, they're most likely the ones who will continue to take care of the land and live off it. Okay, so you've got the location determined. Now, what are you gonna plant there? Number two, selecting the right tree. One of the most important things that you can do is choose the right tree for the job. Now, this step might seem simple, but here are six keys to a successful and thriving forest ecosystem. Imagine walking through a lush landscape where trees flourish effortlessly, their roots sinking deep into the soil. You hold the power to make this vision a reality by selecting trees that preferably are native to the area. These trees have evolved over time to adapt perfectly to the local climate and conditions, ensuring a better chance of survival and growth. Remember the seeds you picked up earlier? These might do. Even though it can be as easy as planting any seed from the right species, you could go further by only selecting seeds with the right genetics. Think of it as selecting the perfect recipe for a tree. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. As you're selecting the right tree, think of its actual purpose. Are you planting trees for their remarkable ability to capture carbon, helping to combat climate change? Or do you envision a landscape abundant with trees bearing fruits and nuts, providing food and life for both the land and its inhabitants? The decision is yours, and it shapes the character of the forest that you're cultivating. Consider also the silent partnership between trees and soil. Some trees possess a remarkable talent for replenishing nutrients and binding water in the soil. Trees are expert rejuvenators of soil for future generations of flora. This means that they lay the foundation for any future farming or crop growth in the area. But remember, you're not on this journey alone. Collaborating with local communities who intimately understand the land can provide invaluable knowledge, support, and a sense of shared purpose. Together, you can ensure that the trees you plant become an integral part of the ecosystem and their life, enriching the environment and community in ways that you might not have thought possible. As you invest your time, energy, and care into rekindling these forests, consider the potential for creating a circular, sustainable economy. Explore the ecosystem services and innovative ways to derive value from the trees and the ecosystem that we're creating, whether through products, services, or experiences. This can create a cycle where nurturing nature also nurtures the well-being of those involved. And of course, you shouldn't forget to consider biodiversity. We're not creating a monoculture here, so aim to increase the number of various tree species in the area. In the grand tapestry of reforestation, the art of selecting the right tree is a crucial brushstroke. 
native wisdom, genetic strength, ecological roles, community collaboration, and sustainability all come together as you paint the picture of a renewed forest, a legacy that will continue to flourish for generations under your thoughtful care. But when should you plant the tree in the area that you've selected? Number 3. Select the right time for planting. The timing of your planting endeavour can significantly impact the tree's growth and resilience. A general guideline is to give the trees enough time in the soil to grow a solid root system before the cold winter, hot summer, or dry period. So then you might ask, fall or spring? And that's exactly the right question. I'm left with only one option. I'm gonna have to science the shit out of this. But it depends on which climate you live in. Colder climates have shorter planting windows, while warmer climates allow for more flexibility in when the tree can be planted. In colder regions with frost and snow, fall planting is a wise move. The trees will then have enough time to root themselves before winter's icy grip, and they won't get stressed during summer as the summer heat isn't too bad. Conversely, in warmer regions, the trees could really suffer if the temperature's too high. That's why spring planting can be a risky move. In warmer regions, the earth retains its warmth through the winter, which gives the trees a great opportunity for root growth. But the time of planting also comes down to which tree type you've selected. First and foremost, you'll want to choose a time when the trees are dormant. This is their resting period, a time when they conserve energy, send it down to the roots, and prepare for the burst of growth that lies ahead. Deciduous trees such as maple, oak, and birch drop their leaves when they go dormant, so they're quite easy to spot. Evergreen trees such as pine, spruce, and cedar don't lose their foliage, but form light brown clusters on the top. Okay, so you've selected your location, picked your tree, and decided on when to plant it. But the question remains, how should you plant it? Number 4. Deciding what planting technique and budget. These are the four most common planting techniques that you should consider when planning a reforestation project. Number one. First up, we have seeds, which can be an affordable choice for your reforestation plan, and guess what? You can even use seeds from the current trees in your selected area for reforestation. By going for native trees, you're not just planting. You're contributing to the local ecosystem by strengthening what's already been built. And you also improve your success rate as the currently standing trees have already proved themselves to be fit for the area. And the cool twist that we mentioned before is that you have the power to handpick seeds with the best potential genes, giving your plants an awesome head start. But don't go about planting seeds just yet. You should know that a little caveat to planting seeds is that they have a much lower success rate than the upcoming alternatives. Studies have shown that only about 20% of seeds dropped by drones actually manage to grow into full-grown trees, and it takes much longer to see the result of your planting. But don't worry, we're just getting started. There are more techniques to explore that might just be the perfect fit for your green dreams. Number two. Ever heard of barefoot seedlings? They're a fantastic planting option that could be your shortcut to a thriving forest. These trees come with the soil, so their roots are more than excited to be earthed. Bare root trees will give you a head start with a well-developed root system that's been growing naturally. Unlike their containerized counterparts, sorry for the small spoiler on the next planting option, bare root trees hit the ground running and often outgrow them in just a few years. In fact, they boast a staggering 200% more roots, which are primed to explore their new home. Plus, when handled carefully and the roots stay intact, they've got a very good survival chance once planted. But here's the scoop. Bare root trees are a little picky about timing. They prefer to be planted in early spring or late fall when the soil is at its moistest and they are in their dormant phase. And there's a catch. The clock's ticking. Once these trees are uprooted from the nursery, you've got about a week to plant them or their roots just won't survive the dry conditions. So if you're up for a bit of timing magic and want a tree that's ready to hit the ground running, bare root might just be the way to go. But if you're not much for timing, then number three, containerized tree seedlings might be for you. They're larger than bare root trees, but not as hefty as bald and burlap trees. Oops, sorry for the spoiler of the next type, again. Think of them as the just right choice, balancing convenience and impact. Here's the scoop. 
Container-grown trees are your go-to if you're looking for that sweet spot between size and weight. Now here's the cherry on top. They don't flinch at the thought of transplant shock because every single bit of their root system comes along for the ride. That would be like bringing your entire house with you when you move. No wonder they have a smoother transition and start growing sooner. But here's the catch. They're the thirsty type. Grown in potting soil, they need regular watering to keep thriving. And remember, too much of a good thing can lead to trouble. Unfortunately, these trees can also end up root-bound, meaning that their roots got entangled due to their confined growing space. If not fixed when planting, the tree will struggle to establish its roots deep into the natural soil. This can stunt their growth and energy and potentially kill the tree. Oh, and let's talk cost. They're very expensive due to the production process. But what if you want a ready-to-plant tree that's not too expensive, nor too fragile? Well, then you have the traditional option of number four, bald and burlapped trees. This type of tree is like the Ford of automobiles. There's plenty of species variations when browsing, and they come in many different trunk sizes. Unfortunately, these trees grow slower than the rest after being planted. It's the effect that you can expect when up to 95% of the tree's roots are cut as they've been dug up. But if you have a little patience, you'll see that after up to two years, these trees have regrown their root system and are ready for steady growth once again. If you decide to go with this option, then make sure to bring a strong and skilled person with you, as these are heavier since they come with the soil, and also remember not to plant them too deep, as their weak, freshly cut roots need to be closer to the surface. Number 5. Plan for the early stages. So you've just planted a brand new tree, but how do you give it the best start possible? Here's 7 important factors that you must consider. Number 1. Water. First things first, water is your new tree's best friend. Water it regularly, making sure the soil stays consistently moist, but not completely wet or waterlogged. Number two, soil. Now, speaking of soil, you should mimic the soil that's in the area, and using organic soil is fantastic, but here's the deal. Don't get too carried away. While adding organic matter is great, don't let it exceed 10 to 20% of the soil volume. Why? Well, if you go overboard, your tree's roots might thrive initially, but once they hit the less nutrient-filled surrounding soil, growth could slow down or even stop. And we definitely don't want that. Number three, shade. Moving on, you might want to consider giving young trees some shade, especially if you're planting seedlings. You can get a collaborative partnership effect by combining slow-growing trees with fast-growing. A slow-growing, shade-loving oak can get shade from a simultaneously fast-growing, sun-loving birch. So check the needs of your tree species. And remember, just like we put fences around our house to protect us from unwanted visitors, your tree will need protection too. Number 4. Protection. Shield it from being eaten by animals or insects, and clear those bothersome weeds that might try to mess with its growth. Consider using organic solutions to keep those troubles at bay. For example, number 5. Add some mulch. Mulch is also a great way to protect the tree from having weeds growing next to us. It'll keep the soil moist and feed the surrounding ecosystem, and when it comes to feeding your tree, consider a little bit of number 6, fertilizer. Fertilizer goes a long way, but easy on the pedal. Too much can actually harm your tree. And last but not least, your tree could actually do with some extra number 7 support, especially for those smaller saplings. You can strategically place rocks around the base. For taller trees, stakes with gentle ties will prevent wiggling that could damage those delicate roots. With water, soil smarts, protection, shade, and a touch of support, you're well on your way to becoming the ultimate tree whisperer. Your trees will thank you by growing strong and standing tall for years to come. Let's review how far we've come. This is Folk. He grabbed a shovel, purchased a tree seedling, drove out to the woods, planted the seedling, had an organic, gluten-free beer to celebrate, drove home, and this is the result. But this is you. You went online and scouted for the perfect area to reforest. No, but actually jokes aside, hemp can actually decontaminate damaged soil. Check out our video here. Alright, so you've picked your area, you did your homework, you talked to locals regarding what tree species to use, what they need, and where to plant it. You learned if it should be planted in the spring or the fall, and most importantly, how to plant it. And then, you made sure to protect the trees properly and involve locals in its survival. A few years later, and voila! So you've learned about the fundamentals of tree planting. You're now well on your road to scoring big with your next planting project. 
which is a fundamental step into moving into larger reforestation projects which get more and more complex. But that's not all. Remember how we promised a gift in the end? We've also created a worksheet with these fundamentals above to help you plan and execute your next planting project. The worksheet will help your thinking and guide you in your reforestation journey. It's free, just download it using the link below. But what should you do next? You can either A. Get started preparing for planting trees using the worksheet, or B. Watch another video from us. Here's one you might like.